Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regaming Silicon video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with a Geekbench score of the i9-9900. Now, notice I did say the 9900 here, not the 9900K. So this non-overclockable SKU does indeed feature lower clock speeds. So what type of performance results do we get? Well, according to Geekbench, we have 5,786 on the single core score and a multi-threading score of 30,050. The single thread in particular is more anemic than what we've seen from the i7-9700K. And this is once again because of the lower clock speeds. Even so, it's a fairly impressive chip and I'm sure that in some tasks, because obviously it does have hyper threading, which is something that the 9700K does have, it still has the eight physical cores, we may see some instances where this processor does excel. But for the extra couple of bucks, personally speaking, I would rather plonk down the money and pick up the K derivative. But of course, some motherboards don't support that, such as, let's say, the B360, which of course doesn't support, let's say, the 8600K uh, with overclocking. And now let's move over to a whole bunch of GeForce 20 news. We're going to start things out with the T. U106, which has been just recently spotted. We see the TU106 has been identified in HW Info. Now, just a quick reminder then, the TU102 is found in the RTX 2080 Ti, and the TU104 is found in the RTX 2080. It's therefore most likely that this particular GPU core will be indeed the RTX 2070. There is some confusion though, it's possible it could also be the same core that we see in the RTX 2060 GPU as well, but that's not been 100% confirmed. But there have been a few comments from Nvidia themselves, and it does hint that we will see a very different Turing for the 60 series than let's say the 70 or the 80 or the 80 Ti. NVIDIA's Colette Cress recently was speaking, which is now transcribed by the website Seeking Alpha. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description regarding the next generation of GeForce cards. And it's rather fascinating because she gives insight into not only the 7nm shrink of Turing, but also what NVIDIA may or may not be planning with the remainder of the lineup. So I'm going to read out a couple of interesting quotes. One of the questions was that back in August they announced the new GeForce RTX gaming platform and Turing, and these cards are significantly more expensive but do increase the level of technology. What specifically can they talk about in terms of the performance for Turing? So she answered, so we get to talk about ray tracing. So ray tracing is what we brought together to overall gaming. A lot of people ask what is ray tracing. Ray tracing, for those who have the type of background, understand it's probably the holy grail of overall graphics. Meaning overall this time, what we've been able to do in, in terms of simulating uh, the overall use of light, the use of creating the types of shadows that you need to make things realistic. And then just a couple of weeks ago now, we announced the cards for gaming. The cards will come out and we'll start with the ray tracing cards. We have the RTX 2080 Ti, the 2080 and then 2070. This is a major leap of something that people probably wasn't expecting for another 10 to 15 years and games will look different. There'll be a moment you may have to pause and wonder whether it was a film or whether it's a game. One of the points you'll notice is that she did say that uh, they were starting out with the ray tracing cards first. And of course they mentioned the 2080 Ti, the 2080 and the 2070. Now there were rumors that the lower end SKUs, so the 2060 and so on, would not have ray tracing on board. And it does appear that this is the case, that Nvidia, at least in passing, are confirming that this is what we're gonna be seeing. But it does make sense, honestly, the problem is that these additional features, ray tracing, tensor cores, they are drastically increasing the cost of the cards. So most likely, there's a couple of things here. The first issue is most likely you would not be able to sell significant numbers of the cards because the price for the mid-range would just go up too much and people would just refuse to pay it. And of course, that would leave things wide open for AMD to take over that segment. The second reason is most likely if they cut the number of uh, RT cores and tensor cores that would be required to make this not too expensive, 
then performance would be so bad it wouldn't be worth it anyway. After all, if you're ray tracing but you're getting like two frames a second at 720p, and yes, I'm being a bit silly, but you get my point, it doesn't really make any difference. And no one in their right mind would enable that, and it's just increasing the cost to consumers and NVIDIA for just no reason. So it does appear that the RTX 2070 and above are where we're going to be seeing this. Of course, this does mean, at least in the short term, adoption for ray tracing is going to be lower, but it will still be there. And yes, some people will say, well, that means that it's not going to get widespread adoption. I disagree. AMD are obviously going to be implementing this with their cards. Eventually, we're going to see other titles really start pushing this. And honestly, having certain features which only are supported by certain cards is kind of normal. I mean, we've seen this in the past. NVIDIA have done this back in the days of the GeForce 4s. Remember the MX derivatives of the GeForce 4s didn't have the feature set, the hardware feature set of the non-MX cards. It's just kind of how things work sometimes until things become uh, cheaper, then the mainstream kind of just doesn't have them. And if you think about it, this also goes into resolutions as well. For how many years? 10 years or so? 1080p has been normal for PCs and now 1440p is becoming standard. Like you can quite happily game on a 1070 or even a 1060 or an RX 580 or whatever. Most games quite happily at 1440p. So obviously resolutions are starting to go up and it's a lot easier for cards to be able to do that. So unsurprised that the feature set is just out of reach for the mid-range cards, but it's going to be fascinating to see how this is adopted by developers in the short term. There was also a question regarding performance. What type of performance improvements are we going to be getting? Yes, we always like the effect that we're seeing even an upgrade to any card. Your games will automatically get better. So we're playing the day before. What we're now playing with is absolutely improved. We'd like to see at least a two-time improvement amount dealing with overall ray tracing on your existing games in terms of existing performance. This is probably our largest leap in terms of architecture to architecture in terms of what we're doing with Turing. When you get into ray tracing, we're talking a six times improvement. Now, of course, one of the things they're not taking into consideration there is DLSS, which is one of the key ways, at least in the graphs that they've shown, that Turing does get that leap. Without DLSS, it's looking like it's around 40-ish to 50, possibly 60, depending on the application. But even so, a 50% improvement that's just, you know, go down the middle, 50-ish percent, 45% improvement is not bad. Uh, it's looking like these cards still perform very well, but the problem is because we don't have optimized drivers out by anyone outside of NVIDIA yet, getting exact performance metrics is extremely difficult. And this is, of course, something that we're really looking forward to testing when we get our cards in the not too distant future. So definitely stick around to see our numbers as we're going to be comparing against the 1080, uh, the 1080 Ti, and a lot more testing as well, uh, testing DLSS and a lot of Turing feature set, which I'm sure that a lot of you guys are very interested in. So what about AMD's 7NM process? Obviously, this has been the talk of the town recently, the fact that Vega 20 is 7nm. NVIDIA are stuck on 12nm for now, at least for the consumer parts as well as Volta. And AMD are clearly going to be targeting Navi towards 7nm, and that's not a guess, that's something that they have confirmed. What are NVIDIA's plans for 7nm? And this has been answered the following. Now, our future generations, we think about no changes in terms of their, we make no changes, of course, that's a verbatim quote, just like all do, and we carefully consider in terms of these overall changes, our performance improvements that we have with Turing without overall change in the overall node is absolutely phenomenal. Meaning, the overall GPU has so many abilities to go through the overall architecture and design to concentrate on performance. There's always a right time to think about that when we have the right changes to be going forward. We haven't announced in terms of any new architectures coming down the pipeline, but we always like to keep that a surprise, but stay tuned, we'll talk about that. Of course, that's pretty much the biggest non-answer in the history of humanity. So whether that is a new architecture or whether they're simply shrinking the node remains to be seen. From what we can take away with that comment, and it's a very uh, <laughs> PR-y answer, but essentially NVIDIA are doubling down on the fact that they are achieving this simply through architecture alone, and they've not made a drastic shrink in the node process. 
So that of course does leave them a couple of options. They can simply do a die shrink from 12nm down to 7nm and make minuscule changes. They could perhaps just increase the clock speed, maybe add a second RT core if they wanted, maybe add a couple more CUDA cores, and they would be pretty much good to go. And that refresh would be very impressive. Or they could do something else. They could go a Maxwell to Pascal kind of jump where the architectures, yes, there are some similarities there, but there were a lot of uh, differences as well. And one of the core ways they've done that, of course, was engineer it purely for clock speed. So perhaps that's another way they would go. They would re-engineer the architecture significantly more to take advantage of 7nm. So there are those two options that NVIDIA do have open. And finally, let's discuss the GeForce GTX 10 series. Why are we discussing the 10 series, I hear you ask? Well, one of the common things that we've been hearing, of course, on the channel is that people are very happy to snap up GTX 1080s, the 1070s, the 1070 Ti's, the 1080 Ti's, whatever, because of the price. And it's because, of course, there was that oversupply of GPUs. That combined with the fact that the cryptocurrency demand is pretty much gone to hell right now, and the fact that uh, retailers are only too happy to clear their inventory, it's meant that prices of certain uh, SKUs are very compelling. In fact, just to give you an example, for the low 200 US dollar mark, you can pick up like a 570 or a 580 card, which is very good. I mean, that's very hard to argue with. But it also means that the, five, the, the 1070, the 1080, and so on, I'm just going to call it the 10 series, has been very popular and people have been buying them up. And that has led to the fact that the supply, which was like, you know, over there, is now going do 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 and well, very low. What does that mean? Well, that means all the killer deals that we've been seeing are going to start to dry up. And this is not just speculation. This has actually been confirmed by well-known online retailer Overclockers UK. The too long didn't read of the post is that all of the deals they've been doing on Amazon, on overclockers, on eBuyer, and so on are probably going to start to dry up very soon. So that means that if you do want one of these cards, you want to get them on the cheap, well, uh, yeah, you might want to grab one. Uh, just a quick thing we do have some affiliate links to Amazon uh, in the video description. I'm just saying if you are thinking of picking one of these cards up on the cheap, you can go ahead and use that link and of course we'd get a few pennies for it. You don't have to do anything like that, but you know, if you are thinking of buying one, it does help us out. Just saying. Uh, but regardless, no matter where you pick up one of these cards, if you do want a 10 series GPU, I would advise you buy one as soon as possible or most likely you're going to have to go to the used market, of course, and this is just the way of cards because, well, yeah. One product becomes end of line as the other ones get introduced. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe. I don't know what I was doing with my fingers there. It kind of started and I couldn't stop them. They had a mind of their own. So yeah, uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.